I'm Sharon Bill, welcome to my Theory Tuition series where I'm working with you step by step through the ABRSM Theory Grades. There are lots of resources available to help you on my website. If you visit SharonBill.com you'll find some free PDF information sheets which you can download in US Letter or A4 and they accompany each step of this series. You'll find a page there with links to all of my YouTube video tutorials and you can also find out about the books that I have available. I've written an exam technique guide, how to take your ABRSM music theory exam. It's full of tips and hints on how to best be prepared for your exam and also how to make the best use of your time come exam day. So if you visit SharonBill.com, you'll find it's all there. If you can give me a like, that would be really super and please do subscribe to my channel and share out the videos. And now we're going to continue with the 2019 Grade 4 Paper C. So if you turn with me to page 18, we're going to have a look at question 4. This goes over two pages and we're going to have to just keep on referring back to this little extract here. Now our first job is to just tick the correct definitions. And do watch out here because you can just glance through and end up ticking the wrong box because they do throw in the odd red herring just to confuse matters. And also do remember that this can be anything from grades one, two, three and four. And so a good bit of revision is in order here. And at the end of each PDF document for each of the grades, I give you a little revision test and also some revision tips as well. So do make use of those. So. This is a metronome marking. Just watch out though, it certainly does not mean 84 crotchy beats in a bar. Can you imagine the time signature for that? So just watch out that you don't get lulled into a full sense of security. It's 84 crotchy beats per minute. So we know the tempo, how fast we should be performing this. And here we have this marking here which usually means a slight pressure. It can also mean slightly detached as well and full value of course as well. So slight pressure there is what we're after. Now what's the ornament in bar seven? Let's have a look. So we have a mordant sign here, and more specifically it's an upper mordant, remember the lower mordant would have a line through it, so it's an upper mordant. There we go. Now then we need to rewrite bar 15 but we're going to change it into compound time but without changing the rhythmic effect, we can't recompose it. So we need to change the time signature. So let's look what we've got to begin with. So at the moment we're in two beats per bar and each beat is a quarter note or a crotchet beat. And so for our compound time signature, we're going to have to have two beats per bar. We still need to be in duple time, but each beat is going to be a dotted crotchet note or a dotted quarter note. And so the time signature for duple time two sets of three, if you just diagram that out, two sets of three means we're in six quaver beats, six, eight, duple compound time. And so now let's look at the bar we're going to be altering, bar 15 is this one, and we have got to change from groups of two to groups of three simply by adding the dot and removing the triplet sign. So we've just stretched that by adding a dot, making it a group of three, and there's no need to squish now three into the time of two, we just want three in the time of three as it were, and we just get rid of the triplet. So that's soon done. So now we just need to write that out. So we have our A dotted, and then E, C, B, beam those together by all means use a ruler and that's that completed. So moving on to the next page but keeping this page handy to refer back to, 
Is it true or is it false that all the notes of bar 10 can be found in the key of A minor? Now A minor is related to C major which would have a key signature of no, nothing, no sharps, no flats. But then don't forget we could have the harmonic minor form or the melodic minor form where the sixth and seventh could be raised. The seventh is raised in the harmonic minor form and in the ascending melodic minor the sixth and the seventh is raised. And so, there's an F sharp in the key signature. Which bar are we after? Actually, let me just check. Bar 10, yes, that's right. Um, the key signature, F sharp, could be explained as the raised 6th. There's the raised 7th. Although, actually, there are no Fs in this bar to be sharpened, so that isn't applying at all. And so, we've just got the raised 7th here of the harmonic minor form. So, it is true we can explain that in the terms of A minor. Now then, how many demi semiquavers, 32nd notes, is the first note of bar 5 marked with a star word? So let's see what we've got here. We've got a dotted crotchet, a dotted quarter note. So I'm just going to diagram that out. So I'm going to ignore the dot just to save space for the moment. So a crotchet, a quarter note, divides into two quavers which divides into four semiquavers, which divides again into eight demi-semis, eight thirty-second notes. So that's the crotchet, the quarter note, plus the dot is half as long again. So half of eight is four. Added together makes twelve. So altogether, that is twelve demi-semiquavers, twelve thirty-second notes. Now then, we asked to give the technical names of the two notes in bar 6, marked X and Y. Before we go looking though, let's just see what we're going to be looking for. We're in G major, so let's write out the degrees of the scale. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, there's an octave. G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Of course you can count from G up the stave on the... Um, music when we get there, but if we find we're in an uncomfortable position with lots of ledge lines, we could just refer back to here. So then, let's see what notes we're looking at first of all. So X, we're in the uh, bass clash, so that's C, D, E. So let's count from the G, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. E is the 6, so that's correct. And then Y, back we go, counting from the G, G, A, B, 1, 2, 3, and the third is B, so double checking that is the third, that's correct. So now we need to give the technical names. So the sixth degree of the scale is the submediant, just need a bit of revision for that, and the third is the mediant. And if you want to know why they are called that, if you look in the playlist Music Theory for Everyone and look at the video which explains the technical names for the degrees of the scale, just to show why that is the way that it is. If you want to do a little bit more research and revision on that, do go and look at the playlist Music Theory for Everyone and find the technical names for the degrees of the scale there. However, we shall press on. So now we're asked to write as a brieve or a double whole note an N harmonic equivalent of the last note of the melody. So the N harmonic equivalent is a note that sounds the same but is written in a different position and given a different note name. So the last note of the melody is a D, the D above middle C, make sure you get the right octave and so let's look at that. So the D, it could be C double sharp, or alternatively you could write E double flat. So let's do that. So we're above middle C, so C double sharp will be middle C. There's a double whole note to breathe, so that's C double sharp, or alternatively going higher to the E above that and that's a double flat so either one of those will do and now we move on to some general information 
we're asked to name two standard or orchestral instruments, one woodwind and one brass that could play bars one to eight of this melody so it sounds at the same pitch. So we're looking for an instrument. It doesn't matter, it's not asking you about whether it's a transposing instrument. It's just saying what's comfortable at this pitch range. So we're in the bass clef, but we're quite high in the bass clef. So the bass clef woodwind instrument that comes to mind first of all is the bassoon. But actually, although it would be in a different clef, the clarinet itself can go this low quite comfortably. So you could say clarinet even if you wanted to. That could manage that range. And then the brass, uh, the trompo the trompone, the trombone is our first choice for that range. And actually, I think you'll find that the trumpet can actually get this low as well. So I guess you could put trumpet as well, but trombone is your first choice, I would suggest. So now, just generally speaking, what's the highest sounding member of the string family in the orchestra? Well, that's the violin. And then we're asked two standard orchestral percussion instrument, one that's definite pitch, one that's indefinite, so that's tuned where we could actually play a melody and that's untuned, just a percussive sound. So the tuned percussion, well timp, timpani are tuned, they're usually tuned to the tonic and dominant, the big kettle drums, or more obviously you could play a tune on something like tubular bells, because the percussion in, in family is basically things that you hit, so you hit these tubular bells with a mallet, or you could say glockenspiel or xylophone and so on, so something along those lines. Now on definite pitch are things like your tambourine, the list's endless really, we could have triangle, cymbals, snare drum, side drum, you get the gist, so anything like that will do. So that's the end of that question. We'll look at the next question in the next video. I do hope this is helpful to you. I hope you're enjoying your studies. I'm certainly enjoying working through it with you. If you can give me a like, that would be really super. And please do subscribe to my channel to keep updated. And please do share out the videos. Also, please do visit SharonBill.com and make use of all of the resource and information that's available there to help you. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.